Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will discuss ring oscillator, one pole and two pole feedback system. Let's begin. Ring oscillator consists of a number of gain stages in a loop, and to arrive at the actual implementation, we first begin by attempting to make a single stage feedback circuit to oscillate. Now, in the figure, it is shown a one pole feedback system. It is seen that the open loop circuit contains only one pole, thereby providing a maximum frequency dependent phase shift of 90 degree. We have already seen in the earlier lectures of unit 3 that if there is a one pole in the circuit, then it provides a phase shift of 90 degree. Since the common source stage as shown in the figure exhibit a DC phase shift of 180 degree due to the signal inversion from the gate to the brain. So the maximum phase shift, total phase shift will be equal to 270 degree. So thus the, the loop therefore fails to sustain oscillation group. Okay. As we have already seen in the earlier lecture, for an oscillation to grow, we need a phase shift of 360 degree. Okay. But in this common source stage, having a one pole feedback system, the total phase shift is provided to be equal to 270 degree. So thus this particular one pole feedback system loop fails to have sustained oscillation group. Now, let us see two pole feedback system. The two significant pole appears in the signal path. You can see there are two capacitors we have used. So thus two significant poles appear in the signal path, which allows the frequency dependent phase shift to approach at 190-80 degree. Okay because 90 plus 90 will be equal to 180 degree. Unfortunately, this particular circuit exhibits positive feedback near zero frequency due to the signal inversion at each common source stage. So as a result, it simply latches up, okay, rather than oscillate. It tries to grow, but it simply latches up, but rather than oscillation. Okay, so in two pole system, this has a phase shift of 180 degree, but it also has a positive feedback near zero frequency due to the signal inversion through each common source stage. So as a result, it simply latches up rather than oscillate. Okay, so what we do to have our common source stage oscillate? So we have done this two pole feedback system with additional signal inversion. We will study some more topologies of ring oscillators that is three stage and four stage. So in the figure, it is shown differential implementation of three stage ring oscillator. We have already uh, studied differential implementation of three stage. Now in this, how this ring oscillator is implemented using this differential implementation. We can have many stages in this ring oscillator. It can be four, five. The number of stages in a ring oscillator is determined by various requirements including speed, power dissipation, noise immunity, etc. And in most of the application, three to five stages provide optimum performance in the case of differential implementation. Okay, in this case, three stages are shown. We can use four as well as five, depending upon the various parameters we are using. We have already seen there is always a trade-off between the different parameters. To match the various requirement can have three to four, five stages in the differential implementation. Okay. So these are the two voltage shown over here on common mode voltages that is Vx and V by. Okay. And this is the differential implementation of three stage ring oscillator. Now next is the ring oscillator using CMOS inverter. We can also make this ring oscillator using a CMOS inverter. It will always give us the replica of the input, which is the growth with the growth oscillations. Okay, so in this, the when the circuit is realized with the all the inverters at their trip point, then the oscillation begins with the frequency of A naught root three omega naught by two. But as the amplitude increases, the oil circuit again become nonlinear and the frequency shift to one upon six TD. Okay, which is a lower bending. Okay. So in this also, we have realized this ring oscillator using our CMOS inverter and inverters are at their trip point. 
and the oscillations begin with the frequency of e not root three omega not upon two. Okay, as this amplitude increases, this amplitude is increasing. And it reaches to this, they become more non-linear. Okay, and this frequency shifts to one upon six upon TT. Okay, which is very lower value. Okay, next we have multi-stage ring oscillator. Okay, five-stage single-handed ring oscillator. It is shown over here in this figure that the frequency of oscillation in this five-stage single ended ring oscillator with using cmos inverter the oscillation is given as 1 upon 10 to the okay you can see in the last earlier slide for having this three stage we have 1 upon 60 d and in this case we have 1 upon 10 td okay for a five stage single ended ring oscillator and for a four stage differential ring oscillator you can see over here what we have done we can use loop gain function as the open loop gain for a single stage will be equals to a naught upon 1 plus s upon omega naught and for four stages it will be equals to h is equals to negative of a naught 4 upon 1 plus s omega naught to the power 4 okay and the oscillation frequency is simply calculated using 10 inverse omega oscillation upon omega naught which will be equals to 180 degree upon 4 okay and it will be equals to 45 degree okay because we are using four stages okay we want our total phase shift to, to be equals to 180 degree so for a single stage it will be equals to 180 degree upon four okay and it will be equals to 45 degree and we solve this value for omega oscillation and it will be equals to omega oscillation it will be equal to omega naught why because 10 45 is one and the minimum voltage gain per stage to be calculated and it will be equals to a naught upon under root 1 plus omega oscillation upon omega naught whole square equals to 1. Okay. And it will give us the value of gain per stage is equals to root of 2. Okay. These are the various voltages at various nodes Vx1, Vx by 1, Vx2, Vy2, Vx3, Vy3 and Vx4, V by 4. Okay, you can see the phase shift between them. Okay, so for any number of stages, whether it is three stage, four stage, or five stage, we can find the loop gain function. Then we can simply find the oscillation frequency. We want that uh, the total phase shift to be equal to 180 degree upon the number of stages we are using. By this value, we can simply calculate the frequency at which the our circuit will oscillate. And then the third step is that we can find the minimum voltage gain per step taking this particular value and equating it to 1 because the second condition of Barkhamus and Kadria is that the open loop gain should be equal to 1 simply equal to A0 is equal to root of 2. Okay, in the next lecture we will see about this uh, ring oscillator design. Uh, this is all about ring oscillators, the different configuration of ring oscillators. Thank you.